what is a marketing plan and how to make one. Are you struggling to scale your marketing tactics, goals, and strategies and drive consistent growth for your business? Marketing is typically the biggest expense for most businesses. Yet, most businesses try different marketing tactics without a clear plan and walk away with little success. But oh, not you, not after this video, Vengage comes to the rescue. In this video guide, you'll learn how to grow your business strategically and maximize ROI generated from your marketing dollars with a well-defined marketing plan. We'll be going through what is a marketing plan, how to create one, marketing design tips and examples. Don't worry, planning can be fun and seeing exponential revenue results even more fun. Now, what is a marketing plan? A marketing plan is a report that outlines your marketing strategy for the coming year, quarter or month. Typically, a marketing plan includes an overview of your business's marketing and advertising goals, a description of your business's current marketing position, a timeline of when tasks within your strategy will be completed, key performance indicators or KPIs you will be tracking, a description of your business's target market and customer needs. For example, this marketing plan template provides a high level overview of the business and competitors before diving deep into specific goals, KPIs, and tactics. Learning how to write a marketing plan forces you to think through the important steps that lead to an effective marketing strategy. And a well-defined plan will help you stay focused on your high-level marketing goals. With Engage's extensive catalog of marketing plan templates, creating your marketing plan isn't going to be hard or tedious. We promise! In fact, Vengage has plenty of helpful communications and design resources for marketers. If you're ready to get started, sign up for Vengage for marketers right now. Whether you're trying to set smarter marketing goals, a consultant trying to set your client in the right direction, or a one-person team hustling it out, Vengage for Marketers helps you get things done. How to create a marketing plan. The scope of your marketing plan varies depending on its purpose or the type of organization it's for. For example, you could create a marketing plan that provides an overview of a company's entire marketing strategy, or simply focus on a specific channel like SEO, social media marketing, content marketing, like in this example. Number one, simple executive summary. Starting your marketing plan off on the right foot is so important. You want to pull people into your amazing plan for marketing domination, not bore them to tears. One of the best ways to get people excited to read your marketing plan is with a well-written executive summary. An executive summary introduces readers to your company goals, marketing triumphs, future plans, and other important contextual facts. Basically, you can use the executive summary as a primer for the rest of your marketing plan. Include things like simple marketing goals, high-level metrics, important company milestones, facts about your brand, employee anecdotes, future goals and plans, and more. Try to keep your executive summary rather brief and to the point. You aren't writing a novel, so try to keep it under three to four paragraphs. Take a look at the executive summary in the marketing plan example. The executive summary is only two paragraphs long, short but effective. The executive summary tells readers about the company's growth and how they are about to overtake one of their competitors, but there's no mention of specific metrics or figures. That will be highlighted in the next section of the marketing plan. An effective executive summary should have enough information to pique the reader's interest, but not bog them down with specifics just yet. That's what the rest of your marketing plan is for. The executive summary also sets the tone for your marketing plan. Think about the tone that will fit into your brand. Is it friendly, humorous, professional, reliable, inspiring, and visionary? Number two, metric marketing goals. After you perfect your executive summary, it's time to outline your marketing goals. If you've never set data-driven goals like this before, it would be worth reading this growth strategy guide. We'll have it linked below. This is one of the most important parts of the entire marketing plan, so be sure to take your time and be as clear as possible. As a rule of thumb, be as specific as possible. The folks over at Voy Media advise that you should set goals that impact website traffic, conversions, and customer success. And to use real numbers, avoid outlining vague goals like get more Twitter followers, write more articles, create more YouTube videos, increase retention rate, decrease bounce rate, 
Instead, identify key performance metrics you want to impact and the percentage you want to increase them by. Take a look at the goals page in the marketing plan example. They not only identify a specific metric in each of their goals, but they also set a timeline for when they will be increased. The same vague goals listed earlier become much clearer when specific numbers and timelines are applied to them. Get 100 new Twitter followers per month. Write 5 more articles per week. Create 10 YouTube videos each year. Increase retention rate by 15% by 2022. Decrease bounce rate by 5% by Q4. Create a course and get 1,000 new leads. You can dive even deeper into your marketing goals if you want. Generally, the more specific, the better. Here's a marketing plan example that shows how to outline your growth goals. Number three, target user persona. Now this may not seem like the most important part of your marketing plan, but I think it holds a ton of value. Outlining your user personas is an important part of a marketing plan that should not be overlooked. You should be asking not just how you can get the most visitors to your business, but how you can get the right visitors. Who are your ideal customers? What are their goals? What are their biggest problems? How does your business solve customer problems? Answering these questions will take lots of research, but it's essential information to get. Some ways to conduct user research are interviewing your users, either in person or on the phone, conducting focus groups, researching other businesses in the same industry, surveying your audience. Then you will need to compile your user data into a user persona guide. Take a look at how detailed this user persona template is. Taking the time to identify specific demographic traits, habits, and goals will make it easier for you to cater your marketing plan to them. Here's how you can create a user persona guide. The first thing you should add is a profile picture or icon for each user persona. It can help to put a face to your personas just so that they seem more real. The user persona example here uses sliding scales to identify personality traits like introversion versus extroversion, thinking versus feeling, Identifying what type of personality your target users tend to have influences the messaging that you use in your marketing content. Meanwhile, this user persona guide identifies specific challenges the user faces each day. But if you don't want to go into such precise detail, you can stick to basic information, like in this marketing plan example. Most businesses will have a few different types of target users. That's why it's pertinent to identify and create several different user personas. That way, you can better segment your marketing campaigns and set separate goals if necessary. Here's a marketing plan example with a segmented user persona guide. The important thing is for your team or client to have a clear picture of who their target user is and how they can appeal to their specific problem. Start creating robust user personas using Vengage's user persona guide. Number four, accurate competitor research. Next on the marketing plan checklist, we have the competitor research section. This section will help you identify who your competitors are, what they're doing, and how you could carve yourself a place alongside them in your niche and ideally surpass them. It's something you can learn to do with a tool like Growth Bar. Competitor research is also incredibly important if you're starting a blog. Typically, your competitor research should include who their marketing team is, who their leadership team is, what their marketing strategy is, this will probably revolve some reverse engineering, what their sales strategy is, social media strategy, their market financials, their yearly growth. You will probably need to use a marketing tool like Ahrefs to do this. The number of customers they have and their user persona. Also, take a deep dive as you can into the strategies they use across their blog, content marketing, social media marketing, SEO marketing, video marketing, and any other marketing tactics they use. Research their strengths and weaknesses in all parts of their company and you will find some great opportunities. Bookmark has a great guide to different marketing strategies for small businesses if you need some more information there. You can use this simple SWOT analysis worksheet to quickly work through all parts of their strategy as well. Since you already have done all the research beforehand, Adding this information to your marketing plan shouldn't be that hard. In this marketing plan example, some high-level research is outlined for three competing brands. But you could take a deeper dive into different facets of your competitor's strategies. This marketing plan example analyzes a competitor's content marketing strategy. It can also be helpful to divide your competitors into primary and secondary groups. For example, Apple's primary competitor may be Dell for computers, 
but its secondary competitor could be a company that makes tablets. Your most dangerous competitors may not even be in the same industry as you. Like the CEO of Netflix said, sleep is our competition. Number five, key baseline. It's pretty hard to plan for the future if you don't know where your business stands right now. Before we do anything of Engage, we find the baseline so we can compare future results to something. We do it so much it's almost like second nature now. Setting baselines will allow you to more accurately track your progress. You will also be able to better analyze what's worked, what didn't work, so you can build a stronger strategy. It will definitely help them clearly understand your goals and strategies as well. Here's a marketing plan example where the baselines are visualized. Another way to include baselines in your plan is with a simple chart, like in this marketing plan example. Because data can be intimidating to a lot of people, visualizing your data using charts and infographics will help demystify the information. Number six, actionable marketing strategy. After pulling all the contextual information and relevant metrics into your marketing plan, it's time to break down your marketing strategy. Once again, it's easier to communicate your information to your team or your clients using visuals. Mind maps are an effective way to show how a strategy with many moving parts ties together. For example, this mind map shows how the four main components of a marketing strategy just interact together. You can also use the flowchart to map out your strategy by objectives. However you choose to visualize your strategy, your team should know exactly what they need to do. This is not the time to keep your cards close to your chest. Your strategy section may need to take up a few pages to explain, like in the marketing plan example here. With all of this information, even someone from the development team will understand what the marketing team is working on. This minimalistic marketing plan example uses color blocks to make the different parts of the strategy easy to scan. Breaking your strategy down into tasks will make it easier to tackle. Another important way to visualize your marketing strategy is to create a project roadmap. A project roadmap visualizes the timeline of your product with individual tasks. Our roadmap maker can help you with this. For example, this project roadmap shows how tasks on both the marketing and web design side run parallel to each other. Or a mind map if you want to include a ton of information in a more organized way. Number seven, tracking results. Guidelines. Close your marketing plan with a brief explanation of how you plan to track or measure your results. This will save you a lot of frustration down the line by standardizing how you track results across your team. Like the other sections of your marketing plan, you can choose how in-depth you want to go. But there needs to be some clear guidelines on how to measure the progress and results of your marketing plan. At the bare minimum, your results tracking guidelines should specify what you plan to track, how you plan to track results, and how often you plan to measure. But you can add more tracking guidelines to your marketing plan if you see the need for it. You may also want to include a template that your team or client can follow to ensure that the right metrics are being tracked. Let us know if this information was helpful for you and if you're planning to create a marketing plan with all of our tips from this video. All of our information and resources and blog posts and guides and templates, everything will be in the description box below. You can register today for free designing. Have fun! Go kill it out there, marketers!